What's up guys, Fury TV here, and we are back with another episode of Poker Hands. Before getting into it, I would like to ask you guys to hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoy our videos, as your support is allowing us to continue posting videos on a daily basis. Matt Culberson has led this thing wire to wire, but it's not over yet as these other two players, Mike and Jeff, they want to be our next HBT champion as well. And hello! Pocket aces for Matt. He's going to raise to 225,000. It's a little unfair for the chip leader to also wake up with aces on the button. Jeff calls 185K with ace five of clubs. And the f oh my gosh, the flop, two fives and an ace. And if we thought it was unfair, it's even more unfair as both players flop a boat, but Matt flops the biggest boat possible. Just a disaster about to happen. So a check, and then Matt bets 125,000, and Jeff quickly makes the call as he's still stacking chips from the last hand. A turn is the ten of diamonds. And Jeff slow playing what he thinks is the winner checks over to Matt, and now Matt checks as well, and we go to the river card, the jack of diamonds. Neither player worried about the diamonds. Both players with a full house. Jeff's now going to bet 350,000. He's going to be in for a big surprise. I'm all in. Call. Now a raise and a call. Wow! And all in. Full house, full house. Look at that flop. He sees that, that it is just a terrible cooler here at Look this at final flop. table. Look at that. What a cooler. <laughs> And just Jeff. like that, Jeff is going to be That's eliminated <laughs> in third place, taking home $175. He's wow. a lawyer by trade. He's trying to be our next HPT champion. Well, he certainly secured that last case. And sometimes a lot of poker is won through determination. And he really had it in that last hand. Well, did you see it on the camera? He didn't check his cards. He never looked at his cards. And he made the call. He doesn't know it, but we know it. He's got pocket queens. And now lying on the button is going to make. Did you see what I saw? Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of playing in the blind. He's feeling. He's playing the heater there. He just won a hand. He just threw the chips in and made the 50k call. That's kind of like driving in the fog. I'm not a big fan of that either. But it can be thrilling and exciting at times. The problem there is he probably should have raised, and it probably would have gotten. Well, Griff might have folded. Scott might have folded, too, with just a six. Look the flop now, this. two deuces and a tray. Wow, Lion getting the big piece of meat, as they often do <laughs> out there in the jungle. So Scott now is going to make a bet of 100000 After the fold, Eric's just going to make the call. This is a nice call by Eric, not overplaying his hand. It's kind of a defensive trap. You, you're beating uh, a lot of hands, but you're losing to anybody that has the deuce. The Lions going to raise to 325,000. That should get Scott out of the way, as it does. Now, will Eric shove here? Will Eric call here? Well, Eric's made the call. Oh, well, he's gone. I thought he made the call, but now he's moved all in. And this will be a very easy decision for the Lion as his cat falls down. He makes the call, ladies and gentlemen. Eric's going to see the bad news. Well, this is what happens when you drive in the fog or play in the blind. Sometimes you just drive right off a cliff. And that's exactly what's happened. Turn card now is the four of hearts. So just two cards that can help Eric or he will be eliminated. Good night, baby. After playing so well, that last hand, blind determination sometimes finds the rail. The river card is the four of clubs, and that is going to do it. Eric going out in fifth place, $23,668. Like I said before, he's into this thing for just $575. He's going to take his cash, and he's heading. 1000 going to go to our champion tonight here from Daytona Beach. Blinds are 20000 40000 with a 5K ante. Action will start with JC. He's going to fold. JC's just looking for a good spot to put all his chips in the middle, but that wasn't it. Action is folded over to Carlos. His Queen Jack offsuit. Carlos is going to go ahead and raise it up now to 80,000 with his Queen Jack. Folded over to Tim. Tim Woodson, Melbourne, Florida, and I play poker for a living. 
it's pretty important, you know, I'm here for the money. I'm trying to go get it, and uh, I know there's some good players, but I'm going to go after it. Tim looks down at pocket nines from the big blind. No three bet here. He's just going to make the call with his pocket nines. Carlos has two overs to Tim's pair here, and he also has position. Heads up now to the flop. Two aces and a nine. A lot of boats and sets and <laughs> quads being made at this <laughs> final table. Tim here has flopped a boat. Nine's full of aces. It's interesting that Tim is electing to lead out here. I think he could have gotten a bet out of Carlos here. But I don't know if Carlos is going to call the 80,000 or if he's just going to let it go. There is a flush draw on the flop, so maybe Carlos thinks that that's what Tim's betting. Carlos does make the call, 80,000 and a call. Turn card now, the six of clubs. Now I think I would like it if Tim checks it over to Carlos. He's going to do just that, trying to set the trap. Carlos reaching for those placards. He's going to make a bet. 220,000. And I think Tim checked it over to Carlos so that Carlos could try to represent an ace here. And it looks like Tim's just going to make the call. Tim does just that. He makes the call. And I think what would be a really interesting play by Tim is if the spade doesn't come off on the river, Tim leads into Carlos, which I think would confuse Carlos enough to maybe get him to call with queen high. But with the deuce of spades on the river, I think Tim might just have to bet into Carlos here. And it's an all-in bet. And Carlos is going to fold. And he shows his pocket nines, and he's going to win this pot. I think based on the way Tim played it, though, he pretty much got the maximum out of Carlos. I like the way that he played this hand. And, you know, I mean, 9% of the chips in play and 14 big blinds still trying to recover from that king high call that Ryan made against him. John looks down at queen deuce. Nothing doing for our short stack. Greg. And he will fold. And now to chip leader, Ryan Hickey. Rags all around the table right now. Let's see what Penelope has. More rags. But she would be first to enter the pot here. She's just going to limp in from the small blinds. And Alana will check her option with Jack-9. And so it's ladies only. On this flop, it is Jack-9-Jack. Jack. Jack. What a flop for Alana. She's flopped the boat. Fred, you know the way I love to play Jack-9. I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> That's the flop I'd always be hoping for, and it never hits me. Oh, and this is even better to Alana. Penelope's oh, going to fire 100,000, trying to represent the jack. The problem is Alana actually has the jack. Oh, and the nine to go with it. Is Alana going to scare Penelope away here? I hope not. I hope a flat call is coming. Well, Alana is in the tank, and she is going to smooth call it, trying to hide that monster hand of hers. Does Penelope look like someone who's willing to fire on the turn if she has air? We'll find out. Well, the turn is a five, so now she has two pair with jacks and fives. 250. And Penelope just keeps on firing into Alana. You got to give Alana credit for her poker face right here. If that were me, I'd be spiking the football and doing cartwheels. Someone betting into me when I flopped a boat. And if I'm Alana, I don't want to raise any suspicions. I just flat call here as well. One of the perks to being in position. Absolutely. There you go, girl. And this pot now approaching a million in chips. And a Penelope's plan so far not working out at all for her. And the river is an eight. Penelope's going to be first to act. And she is going to move her chips into the middle. It's a snap call from Alana. She didn't say anything, and she didn't push that chip in. It's not all in. And she said call, so it's... And Greg Raymer pointing out that Penelope didn't say all in. She just moved the chips into the middle. Alana makes the quick call. She's going to show Penelope the boat. Well, Alana is going to pick up a monster pot as Penelope picked the absolute worst. Here, blinds are still at 15 and 30 with a 4,000 chip ante. And this is Casey Yance, 27 years old, lives in Columbus, Ohio. 
It says if he wasn't playing poker professionally, Casey would be a history teacher. That's two opposite ends of the spectrum, isn't it? Be a gambler or be a history teacher. Action is now on the cowboy, Mike Harris, rancher from Wyoming, who's just going to call with, oh, we don't know with what. It's the mystery hand. Oh, yeah. Give the mystery hand a mic who I can't seem to figure out for the life of me. Put on the poker pro hat, Maria Ho. Let's start speculating what Mike Harris might have. We know Casey's got the wired seven. And after Mike's call, the action is folded and we are heads up going to the flop. I don't expect to do too well on this one, but I'm gonna give it my best. <laughs> the flop comes ace, five, ace with a couple of spades. Casey checks over to Mike. Mike checks behind. Maria, any ideas yet? Not a clue, and I'm not even going <laughs> to pretend like I do. A king of spades comes on the turn. I can sure. say that Mike could have an ace or not because he could be slow playing the trips that he flopped. Since we've also seen that he's a little bit on the tighter side, he might have come in with an ace here without three betting Casey's open. Well, both players check the turn. A four comes on the river. Casey again checks. He's pretty much all but shut down in this hand. I got to think if Mike fires here, he's going to win. Well, now I'm pretty certain that Mike doesn't have an ace, but he could possibly have a king here and checked it back on the turn. So, you know what? Shot in the dark, literally, I am going to give him king, queen, or king, jack here. 100,000 is the bet from Mike and Casey. I don't even beat a bluff. Has the best hand, but... I think it's hard for Casey to fold here. Mike opted to not bet the flop nor the turn, and I think now Casey's just going to have to call and hope he has the best hand. Well, that's what he does. He's calling. And look at that, Maria, with ace five, Mike flops the boat. Well, I wasn't way off base by saying that Mike wouldn't necessarily three bet with an ace in his hand pre-flop. And he did slow play like I said he could have.